Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of All Spans. I'm your host, Bull, and it's time for my spring practice day A thoughts. We're going to be kicking it off with the wide receivers room. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We got to hear from Coach Kelsey Pope, Chris Brazel, Dante Thornton, and Squirrel White. And competition has been a common theme for every single position group that we got to listen to so far in spring practice. Now, we talked about that defensive line being the deepest group on this team, and it could be, but maybe the wide receivers room could push for a close second or maybe 1A and 1B because that room is loaded too. And I love what I heard from Coach uh, Pope just talking about, man, look, there is so much competition and he loves that these young players, okay, these true freshmen in Mike Matthews and Braylon Staley have come in and they've worked like veterans. They're trying to get everything figured out. He talks about Chris Brazel coming in and doing that same thing as a transfer player. And Chris Brazel talks about, man, look, that was probably the most difficult thing, just making that transition from learning this up-tempo offense. The fastest offense in the SEC, I think, is probably really the fastest offense in the entire country. And it sounds like, and it looks like he's really hitting his stride at this point. But something else that I love to hear from Coach Pope is just him talking about how, man, look, we might not get these flag calls. We talked about this so much last season. You've got to have dogs on the outside and really at every single position on your football team. Football is different in the fact that it's a very physical game. It's not like basketball, and I hate to bring this up, but Go back to that game that we just lost versus Purdue where we're not getting calls and we end up losing that game. You can't enforce your will in basketball because if you do, then you might get called for that foul. But in football, if the refs are letting you play, then you can kind of strong arm yourself and you can kind of, you know, find some ways to work through that contact. And we could tell early on in spring practice that the physical part of being a wide receiver was a very strong point of emphasis. So I'm happy to hear Coach Pope uh, just kind of reaffirm that to all of us. And I mean, you can tell, you can see it in every single drill that they're doing, they're getting hit with bags and stuff. So that's what it takes, okay? We know that the referees are not going to, for whatever reason, call flags on the University of Georgia. They mug you, they hold you. They've been getting away with that for, I mean, close to like a decade now. But now that we've got some bigger, stronger, faster wide receivers that are dogs that are going to fight through their contact, I feel a lot more comfortable with how we're going to be looking moving forward. Coach Pope also spoke about, man, look, all of these guys have rotated as ones. He said that we've had eight different starting rotations, and this is just the eighth day of practice. So that is a very, very big deal. That's very impressive. It means that that room is deep, and we'll talk about this, how deep it is, right? Talk about a guy like Dante Thornton, six foot five. He looks like he's about 230 pounds, something like that. Now he talks about, man, look, uh, you know, starting off at slide, I wasn't very comfortable. I'm more of an outside wide receiver once I made that move. I just got locked in, right? And he says, you know, he got injured and it was kind of a blessing in disguise for him because then he was able to hone in more on some of the smaller details in football. That's something else that we talk about a lot on this channel. Whenever players go down, if they, you know, approach it the correct way, they can get a lot better. The game will slow down for him. And just in listening to Dante Thornton speak, you can tell that he is very, very confident with who he's going to be for this team moving forward. And I would say right now, if it's down between him and Chris Brazel, at this point, I think that Dante Thornton might end up winning that job. Now, this is where it's going to start to get interesting at is with all of these veterans that we have, okay, we've got, what, four, maybe five guys at the wide receiver position that are trying to go to the NFL next year. And, you know, we'll kick it off with Dante Thornton, obviously, Brew. You know, he's going to want to get his touches. Chris Brazel, he's going to want to get his. But Caleb Webb and Chaz Nimrod also are veterans who can declare for the NFL draft after this season. They both looked very, very consistent in every single clip that I've seen in spring practice. I just don't feel like they're getting enough buzz. I mean, especially Caleb Webb, because we've seen more clips from him. Dude, he looks, he looks like he's ready. I mean, we've got a lot of guys that look like they are ready to play. And you cannot forget about Squirrel White, who I also believe could declare for the NFL draft after this season. He hasn't been as consistent over maybe like the past week or so, but we know that he's a dog. He was the main wide receiver that we had last year after Brew went down. I mean, he was the most consistent guy then. So you would expect that once those lights turn on, especially uh, tomorrow night in that scrimmage, that he should be a guy that will perform well. And, you know, he just talked about being a leader, you know, talked about helping these young guys out. And, you know, we're hearing that across the board from all of these veterans. And he says, man, look, that room is loaded with talent. Uh, he really likes the true freshmen and what they've been bringing to the table. And he also talked about Boo Carter being a guy on defense that is a dog. He said, man, look, he does a great job of throwing off the timing of our routes and making plays. He's a big time playmaker. So that's something to look forward to as we get into the secondary talk. But I'll just say this from top to bottom. I don't know what the rotation is going to be this season, but I would say that we've you know got 
maybe seven or eight guys that could legitimately play a lot this season. And we haven't even started talking about Nathan Leacock because he's he's out right now. But once he comes back, how much can he give us too? So we've I'm just super deep. So many bodies, so many people. What is the rotation going to look like? Is going to be my biggest question. And I would hate to be, uh, you know, Coach Pope, Coach Halsley, or Coach Heifel in trying to make those uh, decisions, especially knowing that we've got so many veterans that are going to want to get theirs. Is it going to take away some time from some guys like Braylon Staley and Mike Matthews, who have been very, very consistent? And Coach Pope talks about Mike Matthews hating to lose. That's what you want. Take a look at any of the all-time greats in any sports. We could talk about Peyton Manning. We could talk about Tom Brady, uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, Jerry Rice, Deion Sanders, uh, you know, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Wayne Gretzky. It doesn't matter. They all have something in common. They hate to lose. They have a chip on their shoulder about, hey, I'm going to prove a point, and I do not want to lose. I'm not necessarily going to be this gracious loser, right? Like, they get angry when they lose. So Coach Pope said, man, look, with, with Mike, we had to kind of dial it back for him because he has to understand that he's still learning. He's a true freshman. You are competing in, you know, the third best league in the entire world for football. So you cannot expect to win every single rep, but I love the fact that he does. And I'm sure that that could be echoed probably throughout that entire room. So very, very impressed with what I've seen from them so far. Something else, you know, as we're kind of making the transition to the quarterback room that we talked about in the film that we looked at earlier of practice was it looked like Nico and Squirrel weren't necessarily on the same page on a on a route. And I don't know was, you know, who was right in that. I don't know if it was Nico was right. I don't know if Squirrel was right, but somebody was right, somebody was wrong. And that's something that we're going to have to continue to get better at. Like we've got to get on the same page. That's one of the most difficult things with an offense like this where everything is an option route. Okay. But it does sound like from Coach Pope. Um, and I also believe it was Dante Thornton that kind of touched on this. The man, look. Nico does a really good job of coming to you after the play and saying, hey, look, I saw you open here and I'm coming to you on the next one. And I can just tell you and anyone who's played football at the wide receiver or tight end or even running back position, whenever your quarterback comes to you inside of that huddle and says, man, look, I'm coming to you on this play or on the next play. It gives you a whole lot of confidence and it makes you want to make those plays. So it's big to hear that Nico's doing that. And I'm just going to anticipate that he is also telling the players, hey, look, this is what I'm going to do if we see this look, right? And this is what I want for you to do. This is where I want for you to be. That's going to be huge. That's going to be critical. And the more that they play together as a team, the more comfortable that everyone's going to become uh, in that facet of the game. And that's also why I think it's huge that we've been rotating so many different players in different spots with different groups so that we can, you know, just be very, very versatile and multiple in the way that we are going to come out. I would love to see us run some four wide sets, but we've got some very dynamic playmakers at tight end as well. So onto the quarterbacks, I think that they look very confident. I mean, just very sharp. The balls are right on the money, very crisp. They look like they are, you know, I would say pretty close to ready to start this season off. And I would anticipate that coming up in the scrimmage tomorrow that the offense may end up getting the better of the defense. A lot of that is going to be predicated off of how does the offensive line look versus that defensive line? And with the offensive line, we didn't get to see too many clips. But something that I will point out is that Trevor Duncan looks really good, okay? Now, he's not filled out just yet, but his frame is literally prototype. We haven't really seen him do anything, but sometimes you can just tell. Like, you can just look at a player just standing there and kind of tell how they're just, like, walking through drills. Like, oh, yeah, this player definitely has it. So if he could end up being a guy that could gain enough weight from now to the start of the season, he could end up pushing to be a backup as a tackle. I think that he is like literally prototype tackle with the arms and the length and all that type of stuff. Maybe at left tackle, we don't know who else is going to kind of work into that mix outside of Dane Davis. But, you know, just in yesterday's practice, okay, we didn't get to see this today, but in yesterday's practice, I like the way that Sham looked playing guard, and we kind of talked about that. So I think that this offensive line is going to be very, very strong. It just all depends on that left guard position. But you have to love the fact that these young players uh, really at every single position group are coming in like almost ready. Like they're almost at the point of pushing in most places. But I think that it's the most impressive for that to be happening on the offensive line. Just because over the you know tenure of this staff being here, our offensive line have not done a great job that we've gone out and got from the high school ranks. It's had to be some transfer guys and, I, you know, I don't think that that's a great sign, obviously, but it is a good sign that we're starting to figure it out and we're starting to get in players that look like they're going to be ready to push to, you know, either be a starter or a backup, at least by next season. So 
that is very, very encouraging. And again, with the scrimmage coming up tomorrow, we'll see how they perform. You know, I want to hear a whole lot about that offensive line, specifically that left guard. So for any insider that might be watching this, if y'all could please give us some notes on that, that would be huge. Now on to uh, the linebackers. I didn't really get to see much out of them, but, you know, I want to point out the fact that I like what Caleb Perry has been doing uh, just in some of the other, you know, little clips and things that I've seen. It looks like he has a lot more fight in him now. It looks like he, you know, wants to try to get that starting position um, or at least get worked into that rotation. So that's just going to create a lot more competition. Obviously, Ken Pilly, more than likely, okay, 99.9%, .9 we can bank on this. He's going to be a starter, but who's starting next to him? It could end up being Caleb Perry because he's one of the oldest guys inside of that room. If he could step up and if he, you know, is the best player for us out there, it's six foot four, what, 240 pounds. You've got two guys that are about the same size uh, with Keenan Pilly, who's six three, like 250. You put two guys like that out in the middle of your defense that can both cover. They're both great athletes. I think that that would look great. But at the same time, we haven't seen it in a live game situation from Caleb Perry. So I would say that probably Arion Carter and, uh, and Jeremiah T. Lander would be the two guys that will probably uh, be fighting for the most playing time right there next to Ken and Philly. But Edwin Spillman, he's looked good. Didn't really get to see him today, but he's another one that I could tell you. I mean, seeing him, it was one clip uh, that I saw on Vol underscore football on X um, where he is standing up. I actually want to say that it was holding stays. He stands him up like right inside of a hole uh, on the line of scrimmage. So for him to be a, a true freshman and Holden is, I think, like a junior or something like that, for him to have that type of strength at the point of contact, that tells you a lot about his capabilities. And we've heard several times that, man, look, the coaching staff has said, hey, Edwin, you got you to gotta tone down that hitting, son. You're going to end up hurting somebody out here. And he actually, when his team uh, played up against Jonathan Eccles, who was committed to us to play tight end from IMG, Edwin Spillman ended up knocking Jonathan Eccles out of that game. So we knew that he was a headhunter. We knew that he was a thumper. And I mean, shoot, dude, Jalen Smith is another one that's going to be incredible. I think that Jordan Burns, once he gets up on campus, a lot of folks forgot about him. He's going to be an incoming freshman. Once he gets on campus, he's going to be very similar to an Edwin Spillman. I actually think that he looked like the better athlete on film. So another just extremely, extremely deep room. Now on to the secondary. We actually got to see them go today. I really like what I saw from them. Uh, just working on zone coverage. That's going to be huge. Uh, you know, I, I want to say that Coach Martinez just kind of talked about some of the players. Hey, look, you know, they look great playing man-to-man -man coverage, but, you know, they don't really know what to do in some of these zones. I think that that was actually Jermaine McCoy that he was speaking up with that. So for him to be able to learn how to play zone and for everyone else to understand that, that's just huge because playing zone coverage, it isn't necessarily difficult, I don't think. You just have to kind of, like, know where to be. It's, it's not as difficult from an athletic perspective as playing man-to-man -man coverage is. But if you can learn it right with the types of athletes that we do have, you can get some interceptions. And in I mean, several of them. So I think that we can find a way to have tight coverage and it doesn't have to necessarily be the same coverage every single time. And that just confuses an offense so much, especially if our uh, if our offense comes out and is putting up points the way that we are expecting for them to this season with Nico and with the running backs and all that. And we're about to get to the running backs in just a second. But it just it puts so much pressure on them and you get so many different looks with so many great athletes on our defense with a great pass rush. I mean, I, I think that this is just going to be such a special year. If everything plays out the way that we've kind of said is since the end of last season, once we saw, OK, this is what this is what the uh, you know thought process is. This is what we're shooting for. And it sounds like in everything that we've heard from the coaches just, you know, throughout all of the offseason so far that that's where we're headed. You know, we're headed towards a team that's going to put up points, put pressure on the opposing offense, and our defense is just going to be able to pin their ears back and have a whole lot of fun out there. So I'm excited about that. Now on to the running backs. Just looking at that room today, we didn't get to see much from them. Obviously, Dylan Sampson is going to be the starter. He's getting a whole lot of rest, but so are some of those younger guys. Um, you know, Keith, uh, Bishop, those guys are getting a lot more reps. We're going to have to go out into the transfer portal and add another body because with Cam Seldon, being out probably, you know, for half of the season, we are going to need to get someone else. Now, can Peyton Lewis come in once he can start to actually practice? I believe that that will be over the summer. Can he come in? Can he be one of those guys? Maybe, but we've got to add another body to that room because it looks, it looks pretty thin at this point. So we'll see how all of that plays out. And we did not get to see anything from the defensive line just outside of kind of uh, some, you know, like bag work, you know what I mean? Some uh, footwork things. But we already know that that room is deep and it's loaded. 
and hopefully we'll get a whole lot of information about them coming out after tomorrow night's scrimmage. I am very much looking forward to that, and I know that y'all are as well. We also didn't touch on the tight ends that much, but you know, I will just say this one really quickly that Ethan Davis, every single time that I've seen him, he looks very, very consistent. And at this point in the game, we are looking for a lot of consistency from everybody. And, you know, we did see a couple of drop passes, but we have to clean that up. So hopefully next week, everything looks very, very crisp heading into, um, you know, the final week, which will, which will end up being the um, orange and white game. So we're hoping for a lot more consistency and just for everyone to stay healthy. I don't think the Cooper Mays practice today, but don't quote me on that. Uh, you know, some of these veteran guys, yeah, like, let's just kind of like let them sit out because we know what they're going to be bringing to the table. And they may benefit a little bit more, just like we talked about earlier, uh, from kind of being on the field coaches as opposed to necessarily having to go through all of the physical stuff. Let's try to go, like, let's try to be healthy going into the, uh, you know, real grind of the offseason, which is going to come over the summer. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer friends, and we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.